I'm B, And I'm Sam. And we're two best friends who like to talk shit about smut, wingspan, and sometimes books. Join us every week for a new episode. say four then i forgot we did a double yeah we did a little double didn't we it's episode five i genuinely thought when we did it it'd be like one and done <laughs> like we yeah. do one and then we'd be like oh we're over that that was enough <laughs> i was just thinking this in the car like but i wouldn't say it's been easy no it's been a lot of learning isn't it yeah it's but it's been fun it has been fun and i think we both um made loads of new friends on tiktok yeah definitely like i, I Obviously, like we're grateful to people listening and people who are yeah. engaging on Instagram, but TikTok has just been crazy. Something else has been insane, really good. Yeah, so good. And I think what's also been really amazing is also the TikTok and everybody on BookTok has been fantastic. We never expected anyone, like you said, over the last month. <laughs> uh, well, don't even listen because yeah, no. you've told me explicitly not to. <laughs> <laughs> all the other book podcasts that we've come to find all ones that we already were big fans of like your book or mine who commented the other day or liked stuff the other day and that was just crazy like we're huge fans of that and to see all the comments from other book podcasts it's just been so kind yeah it's been like there's no gatekeeping i think everyone's like yeah supporting each other 100 percent. a lot of other podcasts who were like duos some of them are more than duos, but a lot of them who got into it for the same reason that we did, just because it's an excuse every week to sit down and talk shit about books. Yeah, we've got, I can't, I can't remember their TikTok now, and I'm not going to go through to find it, but we've got a really nice husband and wife du- duo that comment on a lot of our stuff. Yeah, that's They're really yeah. funny, and they do all like, the Akatar filters together yes. and stuff. They're so funny. Yes, and they, they do comment, know what you're on about. They comment on a lot of our stuff yes. as well, which is so nice that like it's not like everybody's been so so it's friendly. not like us versus them it's like all of us together it's like yeah it's really just really nice. yeah really kind and like you said tiktok's just been insane we just can't believe it and well and also the people the people we've been seeing that are listening in general like we mentioned this a few weeks ago but every well, we literally every day we message you multiple times like canada Scotland, <laughs> like you know minnesota this that was it minnesota yeah. i was thinking canada it was minnesota sorry yeah, yeah so you know Hence why, like, we're here for episode five. Amazing. Back again. It's not yet become not fun. Yeah. Yeah, we're still enjoying ourselves. Still enjoying ourselves. So this week, we're on, I guess, a part two. It's not part two, because it's a standalone, well, it's an individual book review again. But we are looking at Iron Flame. Yes. So part two of the Empyrean series. Empyrean series. Yeah. Iron Flame. Iron Flame. This was a recent read for me because I read this as soon as it came out in like November time, yeah. I think it was. Um, and obviously you've just finished it. Yes. And we're doing this episode straight after Fourth Wing. So back to back. Yeah. I guess to start off, what was your initial, like before, I know we spoke about this in the, in the last episode, but just to recap your thoughts on what this book was gonna be yeah so i sort of like my only inklings were that like general sorrow and gale was gonna be like the big bad bad yeah yeah um and like know everything that was going on and not really care yeah um and obviously by the end of the book she proved me wrong yeah but for a lot of the book you assume that she still is like very complicit and yes um, part of that but other than well, that she kind of is but like in yeah in, in, her motives mm-hmm. are like genuine yeah other than that i didn't really know where the book was gonna go mm-hmm. i couldn't really envisage what was coming next mm-hmm. because obviously it, fourth wing ends in ryerson house yes um and like i was like well are they gonna go back to school will mm-hmm. the school let them back like i was just a bit all up up in the air about like mm-hmm. what would come in iron flame yes um, but obviously we start in Ryerson Literally, House yes. and they do go back to school. Mm-hmm. They all decide that they're going to go back and mm-hmm. that's where the book sort of 
starts but in the beginning i mean she's realizing that she's just woken up and her brother is not dead yeah no well we find out the box yeah 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 so she's coming to terms with her brother being alive Mm -hmm. and then obviously goes back to school and has to leave him again and can't tell her mum or yeah whoever and she sort of realizes when she's back in the ryerson house is that got like an official name where they literally call it ryerson house it's called ryerson house but it's in uh, Ad, Ad, uh, it's in aratia aratia yeah aratia. and obviously like we said at the end of the last episode we learned that brian is not in fact dead mm-hmm. but then they do go back to school yes which was a big sort of like you said you weren't really sure where yeah. this book was going to mm-hmm. go but we do find out before they leave that there's some kind of like council has been assembled at Ryerson House. A lot of it, apart from Brennan and Zayden, Violet doesn't know who the rest of these people are. Yeah, the assembly. Assembly, yes. But they've obviously got some quite an established order going. Yeah. And they're not really letting her in on those conversations at that point. No. And her and Zayden are off. She doesn't want anything to do with him Mm -hmm. because she can't trust him. Yeah. And he says... Um, like, I won't touch you until you tell me you love me. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why that just, like, I just didn't like it. Oh, like, well, it gives like, the edge. Yeah, that he's like, nothing's happening until you say those l- three little words. And I'm like... Mm-hmm. Like, all or nothing. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, I'm like, she's clearly not ready to. Like, leave you've her just, And also, you've been literally lying to you've her. Been, you've been, like, there's a lot. Yeah, chilling with her brother <laughs> every chance you get. She's sort of been dead for, like, five years. Yeah, yes. And then he's like, not until you give me three words. And I was like, no, I don't like that. And one of the things that I, like, again, don't feel like I picked up on when I read read Iron Flame, but have read it on this summary, is it says here that um, when Brennan's explaining, like, how he faked his own death, effectively, is that it says that um, he explains that they hid... So, Brennan explains that Tim's previous ride, Naolin healed Brennan and died. So Tane's old rider before Violet is who healed Brennan and covered up the fact that he died. So Ten also knew. Yes. Naughty, naughty. Ten. Really naughty. Really bad. Because everyone obviously would not, but like Sagal and obviously by default Sagal would so Sagal knows, yeah. Tane knows. Potentially even Andana knew. Maybe. I don't think that's ever explicitly addressed, is no. it? it and Zayden knew that her brother, who, like, really in the first book is described, his death is kind of like the catalyst for her father dying. Yeah. And her mother becoming more of a bitch than she yeah. already is. Kind of at the collapse of their family. It was yeah. all around Brennan dying because it was so mm-hmm. tragic. And her whole thought process and the reason why she, in the beginning, doesn't like the rebels is because she believes that Zayden Ryerson's dad kills Brennan. Yeah. But he doesn't. Yeah, it's all a fucking lie. Crazy. Yeah. And yeah, I think when she, when they're flying back to school, she's like not talking to Ten either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's like in a right mood. But while she's asleep healing, mm-hmm. Andana has a growth spurt. Yes. And she's now in adolescence. Yes. And Which she's is... a little bitch. And I love it. Me too. I love you. She's yeah. so sassy. It's hilarious. Like, she just wants to kill everybody. She wants yeah. to eat everybody um oh she's she's hilarious hilarious and also the fact that like her relationship with tim which up until now he's been quite protective yeah. um they have this like constant quabbling throughout the book yeah it's so funny yeah like, like her attitude towards him is like this ancient dragon who could kill everyone she doesn't give a fuck yeah. so obviously when she wakes up she can't fully extend her wing um mm-hmm. so she'll be able to learn how to fly but she'll never carry a rider that's what they yeah. say um so obviously the they go back to school yeah. and Zayden basically says like the assembly will figure something out like don't get involved don't try and do anything mm. and Violet's like fuck that I'm doing something yeah um so she's like how can I find out about what happened when they raised the wards because they've got a ward storm in Arisha yes but it's not powered correct so she starts going to the library and seeing just Sinia mm-hmm. um and getting the oldest texts that she can find mm-hmm. and I think the oldest text there is from 400 years ago mm-hmm. um when the the war with um the Gryphon riders mm-hmm. starts mm-hmm. um so she, uh, for a lot of this book she's reading old texts and yeah. not really getting anywhere yeah 
and then Riddick says that when they were in her mum's office in first year trying to steal a map, mm-hmm. he saw something that referenced two of the original Sixes journals that were kept in Basgaya. Mm-hmm. And Violet's yeah. like, okay, well, that's what we'll do then. Yes. We'll find them. Mm-hmm. But they're hidden in, like, a tomb under... Yeah. Um, under Pascaya. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, did you find sorry to to jump in there, but just to, on the point of like, I sort of expected that they'd have to go back to school because the whole structure of the books are like they're like a school kind of college. Like I get yeah. that. I think it would have been weird if they weren't in school. Yeah. But did you find the way they returned a bit weird? It yeah, was but... just sort of like they just were after like because they stay in Zayden's or like Ryerson house for like I don't know how long it is, but it's just a few days. Yeah. And I'm sure if someone says to them, like, well, where have you been? Like, why why would you just take a few days and then just show up at school again? So they come back while their death roll is being read. Yes. They yes. walk in yeah. and Zayden says, well, this is awkward. Yes. And that's how they return. Mm-hmm. Um, and Dane Athos's dad mm-hmm. is like, where have you been? You abandoned, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And Zayden walks straight up to the dais that they're standing on. Dais. Dice, yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously General Sorengale's there and he says, like, you sent us off to an yes. abandoned outpost. Violet got injured and I needed mm. to get her to amend her because mm. they don't say healer, do they? Because you're not supposed to have, like, the he- mm-hmm, healing powers mm-hmm. or they don't know people with healing powers or whatever. Um, and, and then General Sorengale goes mad and says because Dane's dad is trying to say that they're lying. Yeah. And then says and then she sends him off to like some outpost yeah. like on the outskirts yes. of nowhere. Yeah, because he's technically now graduated, like the year's over. Yeah. And he's no longer in school. Yeah. So that's been a really big thing as well. Like how are they gonna manage? Because they've got mated dragons yeah. and also well, at this point they're not in great terms, but prior to that, you know, they were mated as well. Um and how are they gonna manage her still being in school and yeah. him being outposted? And if I remember right, where they outposting couldn't be further away, basically. Yeah, they the, do it on purpose to the, give them a shit they're stick. In yeah. Samara. Yes. Um, and they're allowed to see each other every Saturday. They're like yeah. twenty four hours off each. Yeah. So each week one of them goes yeah. to the other like to the other. Yeah. Um and <clears throat> she gets rid of Dane Athos's dad as like her second in command mm-hmm. and brings in Varish. Mm-hmm. New person. Who is gunning for yes. Violet. Well, anyone who is at Athvine, yes, she's that he's gunning for. He's definitely smells something fishy. Yeah, um, and he says, uh, the the thing about secrets is they die with the people who keep them, mm-hmm. and like makes that threat pretty early on, mm-hmm. um, and makes it quite difficult for Violet actually to be going back and forth. He he, yeah, like, strip searches her All every the time. time. Yeah. She's leaving. Um, I think one of the plot points is when she leaves, every time she leaves, one of the rebellion relic children mm-hmm. loads ten with the 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 weapons. Yes. So <clears throat> it's a good job that ten doesn't get strip searched because yeah. well, he wouldn't allow it. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 so yeah, there's that point as well. Because effectively now, like we we said this at the end of the last book, but she's just decided overnight she's going to become well a member of the rebellion. Not just working with the rebellion, she is now an active member of the rebellion. But like she's smuggling weapons out for them. And I think that's what I'm I'm missing from both Fourth Wing and I and Flynn. There was no like justification for why she just went. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There was no like internal monologue or battle with herself to be like, should I do this? There was no really explanation. No. Of what they were doing, she was just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think like you know, having re- when I then I when I started to read Iron Flame, I think it makes me realise that she don't think she needs to have that revelation at the end of Fourth Wing. You could have been at least like a third way of through this, and then she finally yeah. decides oh, okay, fine, I'll help you. Yeah. They could have just been a bit more, like, build. Considering yeah. they're such big books, it's, it was a very quick turnaround. Yeah. And then it does feel weird at the beginning of this that she's back in school. Okay, it's only been a few days since Athvine. Fair enough she's in her brother's dead, but then she's just a rebel now and she's just smuggling weapons out. And that was all a bit... Because, like, if she gets caught, it's not just her. It's Zayden and... and what was it, like... 160 rebel children i think it was 107 but obviously oh. they, some have died obviously liam died yes yeah. and like i think they have lost some along the way but yeah for the most part yeah 
another point to make is when she goes back to school mm-hmm. obviously it just goes back to normal she falls back into her same squad yes um Rhiannon her best friend is made squad leader yes yeah um but she can't tell Rhiannon what's been happening and no. that's quite difficult for her yeah be- so Zane uh Zayden says basically if you can't lie to them keep your distance Don't, yeah. and and she really struggles with that mm-hmm. and she starts spending a lot of time with the Imogen. Imogen. Yeah. So she's spending a lot of time with Imogen mm-hmm. instead because she's one of the rebellion yes. children. However, Imogen is the girl who tries to pull her arm out of her socket in her yes. yeah. So Rhiannon's really confused yeah. as to like why are you and Imogen now friends? Yeah. They go running every morning, they train yeah. together, like they do get quite close. Mm-hmm. So that is one point. Mm-hmm. And the second point is obviously there's new first years. So yeah. the, the cross and the parapet mm-hmm. happens mm-hmm. and sorting them into wings mm-hmm. happens. And Liam's sister, Sloan, crosses. Yes. And she fucking hates Violet. Yes. Because she thinks ultimately she's responsible for his death. Yeah. Liam's death. Yeah. And then obviously Eric, a- Eric crosses. Eric, Eric, yeah. Eric. Who is the king's son. son. One of many. So not in in line for the throne. I yeah. think we learned that previous, uh, the, he, he has multiple sons by the yes. sounds of it. Violet obviously knows him because they sort of grew up together, yes. you know, here and Dane being yeah. like the general's children. So she instantly recognises him. Nobody else does. Dane probably yeah. would as well, but she does. And, um, yeah, we learned that, like, one of his other brothers had died trying to complete yeah. Basketh effectively. And he wants to come become a rider. And he's lying about who he is. Yes. So he's on the so his name is Cam. Cam, yes. But yeah. He's got by his Eric. real name. Eric, yeah. yeah. Um, so she sort of wangles it. So they both end up in fourth wing. Yes. So that, she, you know, they're under his yes. sort of watchful eye. Mm-hmm. But Sloane doesn't want anything to do with her. Yeah. And Sloane is getting her ass handed to her yeah. in hand to hand. Yeah. So Violet tries to persuade her to train with Imogen. She mm-hmm. says no. And mm-hmm. then Violet says, Well, I've got every letter your brother ever wrote you last year. And if you want them, yes. I'll give you one a week for every week you train. Yeah. I was like, Violet, you bitch. Yeah. And like, I love it. Have those? Because Liam said, Please don't get, let them get burned with his face. He hides yeah. them. She yes. gives them to Rianne on to hide. Yes. Um, so yeah, so she and that's gets, how she's dating her to get her to train. Yeah, so yeah. he gets Sloane to train. Yeah, because she's fucking lingering these letters over her head. Yeah, for her dead brother. I was know. Like, Shh. It's there's just so there was just so much at the beginning of this book that I I don't know I don't know what to say struggled with, but like there was just so many things happening. You know, like. I was surprised that they went back to school in the way they did. It makes sense that obviously, you know, if like Zayden had ended up back in school for another year for whatever yeah. reason, that would have been pretty like unbelievable. Yeah. But there's just a lot of plot points happening, right? There kind of is like no main focus. Yes, I agree. I think whereas with the first book, it's like, right, I'm just trying to survive school. Yeah. Whereas with this, it's like Sloane hates me. You know, I'm messing with Imogen. I'm falling out with Rihanna on because obviously Rihanna gets quite upset that yeah. like, she's evidently avoiding her, Bridget, and Sawyer. Sawyer. And then you've got the whole thing that she's now a rebel and sneaking weapons out and going to see Dane every, uh, sorry, going to see uh, Zayden every weekend. They're all a bit frosty and having a bomb. It's all just a bit, I don't know. Yeah. So obviously another point is she thinks Dane re- took her memories. Yeah. Gave them to his dad to yeah. send them to Athby. Yes. And knew about it because when he says... When they're leaving for Athbine, he says, I'll miss you. Mm. So she thinks he knew that he mm. was sending her to her death. And mm-hmm. he comes to try and talk to her when they uh, arrive back at school. And she's like, Don't touch me you. and yeah. you'll lose your hand, yeah. basically. And he doesn't understand why she's so mad at him. Yeah. Um, and at that point, I was like, well, you obviously fucking knew. Mm. Like, I was not on board. I was yeah. like, fuck you, Dane. Fuck Dane, yeah. But obviously, as it goes on, we realise that he didn't know no. what information he was giving his dad. And no. he said, I'll miss you. Mm-hmm. Because it was evident that she'd chosen Zayden. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you could see that she liked him. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so Z- Dane is out the picture. We don't like him. No. And she won't have any interaction with no. him. Yeah, I think she, that was the biggest thing is that she felt like her privacy was being stolen because every time he lovingly touched her face, really what he was doing was reading her memories yeah. and then feeding them back to his dad and her yeah. mum effectively. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, Dane turns out to be as big of a nick as he thought he was going to be really, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, the red flags were 
all of it yeah. and it turns out it's just a big red flag yeah however again like so you we were going back to what you mentioned a few minutes ago um i really thought zayden was a big old red, fl- red flag in this yeah i didn't really like it it's this it's not a nice zayden no. it's very like almost playing like hard to get like i like a man who's like madly in love yeah. with a woman and wants her more than anything and he's just been a bit of a dickhead yeah. about it like the whole i won't be with you until you say you love me the whole first book you were telling her not to fall in love you want to be purely physical this, this whole book he's basically telling her how much he loves her yeah and how she's the center of everything and how he'd let all of never burn yeah. if it meant that he could be with her, that it, like, he, he'd abandon the wall to be with her. Yeah. I'm like, this is, you, like, you were giving too many mixed signals for me, Zayden. Yeah. And I think with kind of the rebel thing, it kind of makes sense, obviously makes sense why he hid it. But he doesn't even seem sorry at the fact that he hid the bread and was dead. No. And he says to her, she says, like, if we're going to go forward, we have to have, like, complete he, honesty. He and he's, he's like, like nah. nah. Like, what? Sorry, aren't you going to be, like, groveling for the rest of your life? Because, again, I know we did this last time, and I'm trying not to always bring it back to fucking Akatar and Resand, but here we go. When So Resand does a lot of questionable things, particularly in Silver Flames. The, the not telling fear about the pregnancy, but sorry, that there was a risk to the pregnancy yeah. is a big old red flag. But like we said, I don't agree with it. However, the whole point of these characters, they're morally grey, they're not perfect. Yeah. But Reese literally spends the rest of the book being absolutely you can tell he's yeah. heartbroken about keeping it from Feyre he's devastated that he can't save her when Nesta saves Feyre like he's absolutely like he ties his life to her literally so I, I I'm i not saying like Zayden has to be the same but you know when you're writing in this genre and these type of men why would you write somebody that was all of a sudden a bit like like yeah. I don't know it, do you know what it gives I felt like Zayden and Violet in this, and I know they're supposed to be like in their tw- early twenties, but they were acting like sixteen year olds, yeah, and it no, gave me a big ick. Yeah, so he's supposed to be like twenty three or twenty four. About twenty three, twenty four. Yeah. She's like twenty two ish. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, no, not for me to be mm-hmm. honest. Um, however, he gets out. He gets posted at Sam Sa- Samara. Sa- yeah, mm-hmm. and then her sister Mira gets transferred there. So yes, Mira is also there. Yes. Um. Oh. One thing that I have an issue with in this book, mm-hmm. and it's, it pissed me off all the way through, <laughs> and I was thinking, it's going to get addressed, it's going to get addressed, and yeah. then it finished it, and it didn't get fucking addressed. Okay. Mira sends her letter, went to high school, yeah. and Rihanna gives it to her, mm. and it's all redacted. She's like, oh, it's, you know, most of it's redacted. Yeah. Um, and that never gets mentioned again. She sees Mira multiple times and at she Samara. She her. never asks her, what did you send me? Yeah. And never tells her, my mail was redacted. Yeah. It's already opened. They never that is never it, spoken yeah. about. Unless it's something big in book three. But yeah, weird that you'd go, oh, why would you mention it and now? Surely never every time you talk. Yeah. You and think, oh, I need to talk. And then, you know, he's like, I need to ask you. And then she runs away. Then it's like, oh, well, fuck. you know, you can see that it's building. But why mention it once and never mention it again? Yeah, I forgot about that. I didn't like that. I, I was constantly waiting mm. for it to be addressed. I did like that we got more of Mira in this. Yes, I love Mira. She's a really fun character. Yeah. Actually, probably one of the most redeeming qualities about this book was that we got more Mira. Yeah, I love um, Mira. I love when... Um, uh, sorry, something that... Um, this is a, a fourth wing, but it's just a really good thing, quote, I guess. I remembered it after we recorded about Mira. You know when she's giving Violet her the, the corset that she puts on to give her the scales to yeah. you know um one of the things that violet says is how did you get this made because dragon scales are huge and mira says oh um i know some guy whose signet power is that he can make tiny things huge and huge things tiny and then she says something like oh yeah i know him really well with a wink and i was just <laughs> like <laughs> mentioned it in the last episode but I, when i was like rereading this stuff and it was looking for quotes like it came with that mirror quote and i was like sorry that's so funny yeah. um yeah so it was really great that we got to more of mira and obviously now the fact that they're posted in the same outpost together here in zayden you get more of mira um but yeah a lot of things that i think in this book that i had big question marks at the end of even having finished it yeah. that being well i haven't thought about it but that yeah. being one of them yeah mira and zayden are now in the same outpost yes Violet goes to first time to go visit Zayden at his outpost. 
and they're not really speaking. However, it results in them having unbelievably steamy sex in the changing rooms on the yes. bench. Is that what it is? Yeah. So she, that's not yeah. the first time she goes there. The first time she goes there, time. she realizes Mira's there. She has a chat with Mira. Zayn yeah. gets put on duty and he's gone, type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then another time she goes there, he's in like a fighting ring and they're fighting for the weekend off. I think that shag is post the fighting ring because they go into the changing rooms at all. No. No, is it not? No. Oh, okay. So they're in class and it says Samara Outpost was attacked by Gryphon Riders. Yeah. One rider injured and the professor scratches their neck where mm-hmm. Zayden's relic is Mm -hmm. she thinks oh my god it's Zayden Mm -hmm. and she runs out of class Mm -hmm. jumps on Ten's back and they fly off Mm -hmm. so she gets there she can't find him anywhere yeah but her their bond is like pulling her so she go she follows the bond and he's sparring with Bordy yes and he turns around and she's like you're okay yeah and then they go into the changing room and then they have this steam sex um he lays her down because on a wooden bench yeah like yeah yeah um, and that's when she sort of like admits to him that like she still wants him yes. that she was really scared that he'd been injured yeah, yeah 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 um, so she decides that she's gonna find the vault where yes. the, the two of the original six mm-hmm. their journals are mm-hmm. Jacinia said she says she's gonna help mm-hmm. but Jacinia's like well I'm gonna have to find it I thought I knew every inch of the archives mm-hmm. but I'm gonna need to find it so in the meantime, there's a new class in second year, mm-hmm. which is like orienteering sort of, out in the woods. Yes. Yeah. And they have to do it alongside an infantry squad. Mm-hmm. They get kidnapped, and so yeah. do the infantry squad. Yeah. And they're both dropped in the middle of the field, mm-hmm. and they're both given maps, and they have to find their way out, mm-hmm. basically. So they're trying to find their way out, mm-hmm. and... One of the one of the infantry members gets killed. Yeah, I think oh, so. And she miss she misses Aiden being back because they're out on this orienteering yeah expedition. And basically, so we're jumping all over the place. No, so they did that in Volcano. <laughs> and I think as well, what what you come to realise during all of the scenarios and scenes in this is that despite the fact they've given them every other weekend to see each other, there's some higher power that's doing everything that they can to keep them apart mm-hmm. effectively like like we said there's maybe out of multiple weekends that happen there's maybe two or three instances where they actually get to spend yeah. legit time yeah. together and that's down to varish yes um so another plot point is that she keeps seeing nolan the healer that she's friends with yes. and he's really tired yes. like worn down like dis- disheveled mm-hmm. And then um, they go into battle brief and there's a big announcement and it's that Nolan's been working really hard and brought somebody back mm-hmm. and it's Jack Barlow. Jack fucking Barlow's back from the dead. I was so glad to see the back of him. And, and now he's, now he's back. back. Yeah. And just, sorry, going back to what we just said that we feel like we're jumping around, I think it's because to do like an overall book commentary on this for me is this book felt very confused. Yeah. Like it just didn't feel like there was one that was there's just so many things when i say so many things that happen not in a good way yeah it, it was so confused it was like now jack's back now they've got to do this stuff with the infantry and then the first one they do really shit don't they and like yeah. you said they don't end up doing very well then there's this whole thing with zayden there's this whole thing with mira they're trying to find the vault it's just all a bit sloan hates her and we're barely we're barely what halfway through the book yeah i don't really know what's going on yeah no i agree tell you another big ick in this book mm. is because she won't speak to Dane he yeah. challenges her on the mats oh god yeah I forgot about that oh he's such a fucking prick isn't he but he's so like oh, yeah my friend oh it wasn't my Pick father China. she's I I did think that how unforgiving she was with Dane was actually I did quite enjoy yeah. that but there's assassination attempts on anyone who went to Achbein in the school there's a lot of assassination attempts. Jacinia finds the vault. They go yes. down to get yes. the journals. They need Arik because it's tied to the Royal king's blood. Yeah. Yes. It's tied to the king's blood. So they Zayden's need... back in Basque at first, so he goes with her. Yes, he it's a weekend that he's there. Yeah. So they all go. Mm-hmm. Um he's like manipulating his shadows. Mm-hmm. Rhiannon's involved. She's told Rhiannon everything. Yeah. She's there keeping watch. Like it's a group effort. Yeah. yeah. And they get these two journals. 
She gives one to Zayden and he leaves straight away to to, to Warwick. Yeah. Yes. She she gives his to Zayden to take Mm -hmm. to Brennan because obviously it's in a different language. Mm -hmm. And she keeps Lyra's Mm -hmm. with her. After Zayden leaves Mm -hmm. um, to take it to Brennan, Varish catches her. Mm -hmm. No, Nolan catches her. Okay. Yeah. And says, you know, what have you done? And she gets put into an interrogation chamber. Yeah. With Varish. Yeah. So he's trying to interrogate her, mm-hmm. keeping her black and blue. Yeah. Nolan's coming in to do minimal healing. And yes. then she goes back in for round two, being battered by Varish. Yes. And she starts to see Liam. I am sorry to jump back to this. I thought that happened because they start their like second challenge and it's a part of the challenge. Oh, yeah. Sorry. This isn't the first time she's interrogated. They're interrogated her oh yeah sorry yeah sorry sorry, as no no i jumped ahead yeah they are interrogated as a foursome they don't give up but they break out the yes the sword that zayden gives her one of the swords he gives her is imbued with a like um an unlocking room yeah yeah it unlocks the door and they all get out but isn't that when they're forced to do a challenge, not because they're being... Yes. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's it's not part like of that orientation Yeah, thing. but in, they've got to break out of, like, this... Um... And they've got to hold up an interrogation. Yes, that's the whole mm-hmm. point. And she, and she starts seeing Liam while she's basically on death's door, mm-hmm. effectively. Um, and I really did think, is this is does this mean Liam's going to be back? But Yeah, no, no it was just a really nice, like... Little ghost. nod to yeah. ghost Liam, yeah. Um, sorry, so the second interrogation, though somebody's alerted Zayden and that was the whole point of it is that they wanted to get Zayden back in Abbasgaia because Varish wanted to get his hands on him. He brings in Dane and says, read her memories and Dane says no. Yeah. And then he's like, no, you've got to. She's a traitor. And Dane reads her memories Mm -hmm. and she tries to show him what really happened. She tries to show him the venom and the wyvern. Mm -hmm. So he turns to Varish and says, this is how they did it, or you know, this is what they mm. did, and then he kills Varish or mm-hmm. tries to tries kill to, yeah, Varish, and then Zayden turns up, and he allows Violet the death. The, blow. Yes, even though she's literally on death door herself. But to get to Vazgaia, Zayden organized a stunt to get all the leadership out where they dropped dead wyvern yes, at every the border. Yes, yeah. So all the leadership is gone basically, mm-hmm. except for Varish. <laughs> Um, so there's nobody there mm-hmm. and he's like come on we're going mm-hmm. and general soren gale comes back and says mm-hmm. i want a word with my daughter mm-hmm. and she says like i was only ever trying to protect you mm-hmm. blah 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 mm-hmm. um but she tells violet me and zayden made a deal where he had to protect you mm-hmm. so then violet's like so does he actually like me or, or was, was it, it all yeah. was he like was everything manipulated from the beginning yeah. because of my mother yeah but they go out to the courtyard mm-hmm. she's shown dane everything mm-hmm. and they gather every student and say we're going we're, we're leaving and this is what's happened mm-hmm. and ten projects the image into all the mm-hmm. dragon's mind so that they can all see all, yeah um and i think like half the school decides About to go half, with them yeah. mm-hmm. and half stays so mm-hmm. then the next half of the book mm-hmm. is set in Ryerson House. Yes, yeah. Um, everyone's like sort of like doubled up mm-hmm. front wise because there's no room. There's no yeah. room. Um, they don't really know what to do with them, and they decide they're gonna continue learning as normal. So yeah. some of the professors left with yes, them yeah, and agree to teach them, and then some of the assembly mm-hmm. are also teaching them so one yeah. of the assembly is trying to teach them runes yes. um and, and yeah so they're still in school mm-hmm. amongst all this zayden decides that he will take violet with him on a on a weapons drop mm-hmm. to the griffin and riders mm-hmm. so that he can see that he she can see that he's trying to let her back in yeah and that's when we meet cat yeah i was waiting till we got to this bit is a cattle cut because it's <laughs> one of them, isn't it? Catriona, cat yeah, Catriona. What a bitch! What a bitch! I think I, oh, yeah, I was waiting for this bit. I think this actual half of the book, so we're now kind of really in like the part two of the yes. book. I actually preferred yes. it. It got considerably better once we got over all that fucking nonsense in basket. Yeah, I thought that that could have 
all been wrapped up in like the uh, the first third of the yeah. book. It didn't need to take as long as it did. It was way too confusing. Like just talking through that, I'm like, I uh-huh, I, uh-huh. I I know that we jumped around loads then because yeah. I was just so confused. By the it first didn't. Half when we were book. doing fourth wing, it felt really easy to yeah. like talk it through. And then every time you were talking, I was like, and then I was thinking to myself, oh yeah, and then this happened and this happened in my brain. Like, sorry, not to keep dwelling on the first part, but isn't there another bit where? That it, the evil, the new general, the new the um Varish, the new is he the new one? Yeah. Yes, is like forcing her to wield lightning all the time as a like oh, punishment. And he's yes. making her go and go and go, and so she's like forty seven. She has to like jump in the river to like put herself out because she's so like hot and burnt out. Yeah, Bordy comes and gets her, and he throws yeah. her into the river. Yeah, and then the other general, who the one she gets on with, who's again this is I mean there's so many fucking generals, my mind goes to mush but the one that she quite gets on with gives her like a a summoning orb like a Th- that's this one of the assembly two? yeah oh, that's one the of the assembly, assembly. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Okay, i'm jumping ahead yeah but yeah varish that's another whole thing we didn't mention it's like varish is forcing her to like wield lightning constantly to see how much because they just see her as a weapon yeah that's and that's one of the only reasons why she's still alive is because she's yeah, absolutely and, and general sorengate like i don't know though i don't think uh, a fuck yeah that's true um, so now we're in part two. Yes, with with Catriona. Fucking bitch. So who it turns out to be one of the people that we actually met in, in fourth room. We just didn't get a name or yes, we just didn't really know who yeah. she was. And it turns out that um, they need a lumen luminary. Yes, to make weapons. Yeah, and the the, the viscount has one. Is that yes. what it's called? The viscount. Viscount viscount. Yeah, yeah viscount. Yeah. Um, has one. Yeah, but. He won't give it to them until he sees Violet wield lightning. He what he specifically said, I want to see yeah. Violet wield lightning. That's all. Yeah. That's all we know. So she's like, Yeah, okay, I'll do it. And Zayden's like, not on my nelly. Like, you ain't going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You're not going. Not that then. Yeah. He'll try and keep you. He he collects things. He's a bit of a freak. Yeah. Time goes on. Yeah. They're not really getting anywhere. The war's getting worse. So she's like, fuck it, I'm going. Yeah. So she, so sorry, to, to jump back again. This is what I mean. This book's so confusing. Yeah. Mira finds out and comes to, to, to Ryan's and, and they think she's coming to attack. Yes. And Violet's there with her knives out. Yeah. And Mira's like, put your weapons down. Yeah. Like, I'm here to join you. Who do you think told us how to find this place? Yeah. Like, Satan's on his way. Yeah. And then Mira sees Brian. Oh, God. And, and she fucking clocks she, him. Oh, yes, she does. And and the first thing she does is breaks his nose. So good. A lovely little Soren girl, like, get together. And she beats the shit out of yeah. him. And this is, for me, why I think, like, it could have been such a good book. Like, that is such a wonderful part. Yeah. That we've just almost completely forgotten it because there's so much other fucking nonsense in this. Yeah. Like, it's too complicated for its own good. Mm-hmm. Like, this complex in terms of, like, George R. R. Martin, Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. and then there's just, like, complex where it's not enjoyable. And for me, it just got yeah. too, like, I don't know what's going on. Like, yeah. it's all a bit, like, all over the place. It felt like multiple books crammed into one. It did. So this is such a lovely little scene, and I it don't is. feel like it's emphasised enough. Oh. Like, it could have been much more of a moment, but I love that she clocks it. Yeah. Like, that's fantastic. And she doesn't forgive him, really. Absolutely not. Through the second no. half of the book, she doesn't really forgive him. Zayden's gone on, like, a mission. He's been sent to an outpost. And she's like, fuck it, and go into the Viscount. I'm going to show him my lightning wielding. Yeah. And she convinces Brennan and Mira to go with her. So they go off. Mm-hmm. As they're getting close town's like you're not gonna like the welcome here and she's like it's fine i'll figure it out mm-hmm. and they land and zayden's already there yep because sigail has grasped the map yep um and it turns out zayden's been there before yeah and he's very familiar with the layout of this like palace almost. yeah 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 um, and knows, very familiar yeah, knows everyone because he was betrothed to Catriona yeah. and not just betrothed in a like oh we were supposed to be married but I didn't fucking like her oh no they were a big thing they, like, were, they shagging. were shagging yeah another thing to point out is even though they don't get signets when they bond to Gryphons mm-hmm. they can do mind magic they yeah can, they don't do mind a signet manip- but like they do get yeah. powers and yeah. it's, it's all mind manipulation yes and hers is that she can Ca- Heights, yeah, yeah, cats yeah. is that she can heighten the emotion you're already feeling. Mm-hmm. She can make it like a hundred times bigger. 
they go in, they meet the Viscount. Mm-hmm. He says, I want to see you wheeled. Go to your rooms and get ready. So she, they go off to their rooms. She still won't talk to Zane. Yes. Um, and she puts on a black dress. Yes. And Kat comes to get her and she's like, oh, Zayden likes a colourful dress. And, and Kat's yeah. in like a red dress. Yeah. Violet starts to get a bit in her head, thinking... Really, like, intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, Kat picks up on this and amplifies it. So she is, like, her skin is crawling because she's so jealous of Kat, Mm -hmm. like, thinking that he's going to rip her dress off her and shag her in front of her, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They walk into the hall for food, and Zayden's eyes are, like, all for Violet, like... And then he tells her about the mind manipulation. Yeah. And says, like, you need to try and shield her information that would have been good why is he not telling me and also sorry another thing as well am i right saying the viscount is cat's uncle her dad her uncle her uncle sorry sorry. yes um so she's like so obviously it was like a marriage of convenience because he was from a really powerful house they're really powerful house it brings she was going to be the queen she was going to be the queen of whatever ryerson house looks over from a something and and marjorie i'm sorry i forgot that one erasure erasure sorry Yeah. yeah Um, no, it's not though. Is it? Is it like Tirish? Tir- oh, Tirish. Tirish. Tir- yeah. Oh, I don't know. This is what I mean. Too many fucking places. Too many, too many provinces. But it is. Yeah. So why the fuck is Aiden like not mentioned this? He was literally engaged to be married before meeting Viola, mm-hmm. but wasn't like oh I, she never meant anything to me. Was in a relationship with this girl and never never thought if you're gonna start getting involved in the rebellion, Violet, you need to know that the leader on the other side is my ex yeah. she's a fucking bitch she's really salty about it because she really still wants to that be crowned, crowned and more, not, like not gonna lie wants to bang Zayden yeah. as well and also has a, a signet power but their own version yeah. of it that can make you feel like really angry really jealous literally make you want to fucking murder people and it doesn't mention any of this yeah. doesn't, doesn't need to mention it and he keeps telling her, this is what pisses me off, he keeps telling her, you're not asking the right questions. Uh-huh. How can I ask the right question if I don't know what, what to, like, what is happening? He's such an ick in this fucking book. But, like, you can't ask the right questions if you don't even know, yeah. like, what you're supposed to be asking questions yeah. about. It's really hard. It's, it's, it's so, like, gaslighting. It's just not on. And that cat is such a fucking bitch. Like, it makes me... It's just, like, there's nobody likeable in this. No. Violet's having a fucking time. <laughs> She's behaving sometimes like a bit of a tit as well. Yeah. Zayden's a big old gaslighting red flag. And now you've got his ex fiance cat involved, who's really hot and really mean. Yeah. So, <laughs> she says, I'll wield, like... I'll do like, it, yes. Yeah. They go outside. He sends her down, like, into, like, an arena. And nobody's yes. allowed with her. But Mira no. goes... Zayden's yeah. not allowed with it, but Mira's like, you're not fucking stopping me. I'm just going so far away. Yeah. And I think Brennan does as well, maybe. Both of them go down. I'm not sure. I know Mira yeah. definitely does, yeah. Um, And there's this, like, big, like, corrugated steel box. Yes, like, like a chest. Yeah. But it was part of the agreement. It was given to them when the betrothal happened. That was their gift to the Viscount, was that he had this, like, box thing, or okay. whatever it was. Um, and what, they Zayden's want... family gave yes. it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They want her to to wheel hit it with and like open a... it. Yeah. yeah. Um. So she's getting ready to wield. They open it, and out comes a venom. Plot twist. So she's fighting now. This fucking venom on the road in the middle of a fucking arena. Yeah. Like, nobody's allowed to help her. No. So she's calling for ten. He's like, I'm two minutes out. Mm. So she's like, well, I haven't got that much time because obviously the venom can draw from the ground, and if you're stood on the ground, you're they fucked. take your power. Yeah. So she's fighting this Venom. Yeah. Ten, they, she kills it. Ten turns up. They fly away. Then they say, "We said we might have given you the luminary if we saw you wield lightning." So they get into like discussions then of of a, an agreement, and the agreement is, you take all our cadets, Grife and Riders, who now can't go to college because their college was destroyed by Wyvern. Mm-hmm. You take them with you, and they'll train with your cadets. Yeah. So Cat. And all the other cadets go yeah. with them. Yeah. So now it's not just it's not just dragons, it's griffins, which actually is quite interesting to get yeah. that side of it. But Kat, who is kind of the main character from that side, is such a monumental twat. I just found it insufferable. Yeah. So they have to climb this mountain to get oh, this is about this bit, the fucking mountain, because the griffins can't fucking fly a bit. <laughs> 
Oh my god! Every time you start a new bit, I'm like, let's smack him there. Oh, but so Luke still fucking hates her. Yeah. Oh, I just yeah. so they have to work together. They're all sorted into like sort of like Pairs, yeah, like, yeah, for like squads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, Cat is with Violet, but yeah. but Cat's with Rhiannon. Mm-hmm. Violet's with um. I can't think of her name. Maron. So Violet is paired with Maron, and then in front of her is Sloane with Luella. Yes. Um, they're climbing this mountain. They're all fucking arguing, basically, all yeah, the way. Yeah, all hate each other. Cat just keeps like fucking sniping, and Maron's like trying to be quite nice to her. Maron is Cat's best friend. Yes. So Luella, who is in front of them with Sloane, is a lot smaller. She's a small person, like Violet. She's yes. Lit. They get so far up and then Dane is there blocking the way mm-hmm. because this mountain is full of traps. Yes. They they set set them off as they go so that they're gone, but this one they can't set off. Mm-hmm. So they have to effectively leap over this this space. Mm-hmm. And this Luella says, I'm not gonna be able to make it, and Violet says, Neither am I. Mm-hmm. So Violet basically like jumps, stabs one of her knives into the wall mm-hmm. and then uses that to sort of swing herself yeah. over so she says to Luella do you want me to go first Luella says mm-hmm. yes she shows her how it's done mm-hmm. Luella goes next Luella crashes into her mm-hmm. and Vicia another um dragon rider and they all go careening off the edge yeah Violet holds on and is holding both of them both her shoulders pop out of the yes. sockets because she's trying so hard to hold them mm-hmm. Luella falls to her death. Mm-hmm. Vizia gets pulled up. Mm-hmm. Cat then, that's it because she's like you, you did it on purpose. Dropped yeah. on purpose, and then that is the theme for the rest of the book. Mm-hmm. Maron is trying to say no, she didn't. Yeah. Cat is saying yes, she did. Yes. And that's a theme then. As if Cat so, didn't hate her enough. I know. And all they ever fucking do is bicker in every single fucking interaction. And on top of that, Slung still fucking hates Violet. You've got Slung chipping, and it's just. I was just thinking there was just too much hostility. Yeah, there was a lot of hostility. Um, so they go back, they get put into their squads together, yes. they can't get on. Yeah. So one of the professors says, Right, we're gonna settle this. Every Griffin rider can choose one dragon rider to do hand to hand with mm-hmm. and after you're done, that's it. We walk away from the mat and you put it behind you. Mm-hmm. Obviously fucking cat chooses Obviously. <laughs> Um, and it gets really nasty mm-hmm. because obviously she's amplifying her feelings mm-hmm. already. But she says to her, um, he was with me first. Um, yeah, you know, that, that I've taught him everything he knows. Oh, you know, that thing he does with his fingers. Oh, I hated this bit. And then I taught him that, like... Violet goes to kill her and yes. Zayden rocks up. And he's like, I don't care if you kill her. If you want to kill her, kill her. But, but you'll, you'll regret, yeah, it. You'll regret yeah, it. Because she's so, hiding her emotion. So she stops. And that is when we get the throne scene. Yes, it is. So he takes her straight out, and she's basically saying, "I was supposed to be his queen. Mm. I uh, that crown is mine. You'll never have that crown on your head. He's not capable of loving anybody." Yeah. And he takes her straight from there, and puts her on the throne. Yeah. Spreads her legs. Yeah. Over, over the arms of yeah. the throne. And then says, and my my throne, my house. Yeah, my house, my, my woman. My, my throne. My, my house, my throne, my woman. Which honestly is probably one of the only redeeming scenes in this book. It's outstanding. That's <laughs> fantastic. But also I felt like I couldn't really enjoy it because I'm coming off chapters and chapters of clusterfucks. <laughs> of Cat, Sloane, everybody wanting to fucking yeah. kill each other. Yeah, it's wonderful. But it just, do you know by the end of it, it's only since then and... Yeah. You know, seen the videos and I remembered how good of a scene that was. But it's outstanding. Fantastic. Like, it's a great scene. One of one of Zayden's redeeming qual like factors in that yeah. book. Although to be honest, after that he goes straight back downhill for me. But you know. So they hash her out on the mat. He bangs her on the throne. Not saying the bangs her on the throne. Yeah, he won't bang her. He won't bang her. He doesn't, her he yeah, doesn't want to get any pleasure. He wants the pleasure to be all hers. I can't say I love that, but anyway, we'll continue. Whatever. Um, but uh, I don't know when this is because I again I'm just jumping all over the place now. But after this, cat bipping at her about something, and she turns round and she says, "Remember you told me that you taught him the thing with the fingers." Thank you. Oh, what a what a comeback! 
Like she did very well on that, but it yeah. was very close. Yeah. Cool. She sat on that. Yeah. that was. Because what do you say to that kind of comment of when she's making shit like that? Yeah. Like, and obviously she's in the moment. But like, what a well thought out little comment. Because yeah. like, not reducing yourself to a level, but just acknowledging the fact that like, yeah, you might have been his first, yeah. but you're not the one getting finger bang on yeah. his part of the year. And you ain't his last. And yeah, you won't be his last, exactly. Um. So there's a lot of like war strategy mm. going on. They're trying to figure out what they're they're doing, and then the 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 leadership ask them for a meeting. Yeah, they say, "Will you meet us at Athbine?" Mm-hmm. But the only the only conditions we have is that Violet has to be there, and Mira has to be there. Yes. So the plan is that Violet, Mira, Zayden, and then some members of the assembly are going, mm-hmm. um, and they're going to meet with the leadership. Brennan's not invited. Yeah, because obviously that would be a big fucking... Yeah. They, they're showing all their hands yeah. at that point if they show Brennan. But lo and behold, they meet. They're all stood there and fucking Brennan rocks up. Yes. And his mother is like heartbroken. Yeah. And and at that point, you sort of think, okay, she does really love her children. Yeah. Um, but still goes with the leadership. She's, yeah. She doesn't try and stay. No. Um, they can't hash anything out. They ask them to help them defend samara and they yes. basically say no and he says i've seen the outcome of the war and we lose and they're like don't care basically yeah um because they're getting attacked by the, so samara is getting attacked by venom yes they, they basically now yeah. the threat is venom everyone's yeah. fighting yeah, yeah. In. we're too busy to fight griffins anymore yeah yeah we've realized that they're not the enemy <laughs> well and i think it is heavily implied that like they really knew all along about the Venom, yeah. but because they had wards, they didn't give a fuck who was outside them. They didn't care that the Griffin Riders were getting fucked all the time because they yeah. don't have wards. They were inside their wards and they couldn't care less. <laughs> However, wards are failing. Yeah. Drastically. Another plot point from Here we go. the second, second half of the book. When they translate Warwick's journal, mm-hmm. it talks about the the six plus when the the breath of the six plus one are yeah. combined and they don't understand what that means. And I've seen loads of TikToks where it's like six plus one equals seven. Oh yeah. my God, what a revelation. Because they just rock up to... So basically they realised that the not used ward stone... Well, I think yeah. word stone, but <laughs> stone, where they can erect the wards from, they they understand that as you need to take dragons or yeah. people to... And they to think, erect it. They think that the six plus one is the six different types of dragons yes. like the colors and they don't really understand what the plus one is so they just go oh, we'll just get the six dragons and we'll do it that way so, and this for me like i'm pretty stupid right like i didn't get the fucking rizwell and akatar like I'm, I'm the sharpest crayon in the box but even when i was reading this i was like it literally says six plus one i might not understand what that one is but it means you haven't got enough if you're just taking six but also they she heavily implies all the way through the book that and Anna's scales change colours. Yeah, she sees she's her as purple. Now. Yeah, Looks she's black. Like, yeah. Then she sees her as purple. She sees yes. her as green tint. She yes. sees... So then at the end, when it's supposed to be seven, and Andana's the seventh because she's some different race of dragon. Yes. That didn't fucking shock no, me. No, me either. Because I'm really. like, you've talked about her changing colour all the way through. Yeah. Like she's how... evidently not what we thought she was. Exactly. That's evident. Yeah. Like her powers and all of this is implied that she isn't the dragon that we thought she was. No. She's this mystery seventh dragon that has been people thought that was like dead or yeah. like not alive yeah. i can't remember what the reasoning is but i tell you what i was waiting for this whole book and i didn't get violet to have a second signet she had two dragons how did she not have two signets so um i've done a lot when i was doing like research about this um because there is a lot of implication if you reread the scene you know when she breaks out of the interrogation the second time yeah. They think that her signet is like not time travel, but like um teleportation. Oh, okay. Because there's a there's a section in that where it talks about she's going for the door, and then all of a sudden the door's in front of her, and there's a couple of moments all through this book where she kind of jumps, like, and I, I don't think you pick it up if you're oh, reading okay. it. People think that her second signet is like teleportation. Wow. So in theory, yes, she should be able to have a second signet because she has two dragons. Yeah. When and Dana stops time in the first book. That's, That's because she's a baby. Yeah. So when they're hatchlings, they get really strong powers, yes. but they lose them yes. when they go through adolescence. Um, 
that's how that's explained again. A fucking, that's a fucking stupid. That was just convenient. We need to take stop time. Yeah. So, oh, the hatchlings have powers. Yeah. That disappear. They disappear. Yeah, I know. Oh, turns out plot twist is a seventh be- breed of dragon that we've always known. And even because is it mentioned in four wing? No, there, no, it isn't. No, and it isn't even mentioned prior to them clocking that it's Andana. No, it, but what again? What's really frustrating about that? Remember when I read it, I was like, but I'm sure they say, oh, but the Imperian know what? And yes, the Imperian knew. Yeah, so yeah. that means that Tyr knew all the dragons. They're all standing around like fucking lemons, beating their hands on this stone, trying to erect all these <laughs> fucking dragons. With only six of them, and the whole time, all the dragons knew. Oh yeah, actually, the first one's probably Andana because she's actually a seventh breed of dragon. So they ask her them to go and defend Samara. They say no. Then Violet realizes that Samara is um just a a decoy, and yeah. the actual battle is going to Bazgaya because lo and fucking behold, Jack Barlow is still a cunt. <laughs> He's a venom, yeah, and he's destroying the word stone, yeah, and he kills his dragon oh to destroy God. the word stone. Does that happen while they're at Baz Gaia? Yes. So she knows someone's going to do something to the ward. She gets there. Her mother's like, "Fuck off." Yeah. He's like, "Someone's doing something to the ward stone." Yeah. Her mother's like, "No, it's heavily protected," and she's like, "Prove it. Take me there." Yeah. They get there, yeah, and he's fucking bleeding his dragon over the yes. word stone to put out the black fire that's on top. Sick, it? So then, wards drop, then in, come in. in. So then you've got all the Gryphon riders, you've got all the riders that left, and all the riders <laughs> that stayed, yeah. and the infantry are yes. all trying to battle against Venom. Yes. Bring Brennan in, and they try and get him to heal the stone this i don't fucking get because he's a mender yeah. who or a healer whatever you want to call yeah. him that heals people yeah. bones, broken bones yeah. lacerations yeah. oh dress <laughs> so brennan who is a healer yeah they're like, oh, do you reckon you could heal the, the ward stone? Oh, yeah, I'll give it a go. Put a bandage on and see what happens. What's that? Why have we spent two years in the book trying to work out when to erect a ward stone? But really, that wasn't the end goal. Because they, they do erect it around. But not with the seventh dragon. So it, it, it's going to fail eventually. It's, it's, it'll do so for now. they get it up, but it's yeah. not. It, they realise Andana's like. Yeah. Is she in the veil at this point? Where's Andana? Why no, would... she's with them. So why didn't they erect it? Because right? she's been a salty little bitch and like they keep sending her off and they won't let her come with it, don't do anything. And she's like, oh, I'm going to go and eat sheep then. Like she just keeps... Oh, God, this is the of my fuck. So, they... so they're in Bazgaya. The Venin are yeah. coming. The boards are down. Can't, can't bend the rock. <laughs> no, he's going. He does though, doesn't he? He's... Sorry. Yeah. But that doesn't make sense to me. Mm. He's a healer of people and now he's mending a ward stone. Yeah. That just doesn't make sense to me i'm sorry yeah. rebecca but you've lost me there yeah so they pull them all into battle grief and they put like a grid over the college yes. basically and over the veil and they sort people into sections um to to fight the venom while yes. brennan's trying to heal the stone can i just stop you there and just mention one other thing that we haven't mentioned because we're going to need to mention it for, for the ending violet's been having nightmares shit yeah <laughs> We're talking things we get near the end i was like we need to mention this otherwise we're gonna forget all about that plot point but i've just been having nightmares quite vivid ones all the way pretty much since she's yeah since she's, walk, house, yeah since she's woken up of the sage that she saw yes who is the leader of the venom basically and not only is the hierarchy of the fucking wings and and military a mind fuck the venins have got a fucking hierarchy now. Yeah. So there's sages, which are the big bads. Venins are made by the sages. Yeah. And they and also then, make the wyvern. Yeah. If you kill a sage. No, if you. Yeah, yeah. Then the yeah. wyvern die. Fucking wild. Sorry. So she's been dreaming about the sage, like, attacking her. Yeah. Weird. So they're all fighting up in the sky. Basket. In, in Basket, yeah. But she's doing quite well, actually. Yeah. Um, Sawyer gets his bed, leg bitten off. Yeah. Um, so she goes to ground. Cat and Marin come and she gives Sawyer to them, says take him, and then a Venin is there. Yeah. She's trying to wield her lightning and then Cat comes back 
and then Andana breathes fire on him and kills him. Yeah. But up until this point, we think that Andana can't breathe fire. It's been a thing that she can't breathe fire. Okay. And then Violet's like, you can breathe fire. And she's like, I can breathe fire. Why? Why? But at that point, she looks like the boulder. And, and yeah. so again, another thing about her colour changing. Yeah. She's like blended into the boulder and yeah. like basically comes out of nowhere and kills this man. Yeah. Um, Dodgy wing, can't fly, couldn't breathe fire, but now can. It's just constant secrets, isn't it? Yeah. And I think that's what's so silly. It gets a bit like... <sighs> There's too many secrets. Yeah, it's just like another different. revelation, another yeah. revelation. Then she decides, I'm going to, somebody tells her, or maybe her mother tells her, or she decides I'm going to try and imbue the stone because the stone is mm-hmm. working. Mm-hmm. Brendan, Brendan heals it. it. So she's trying to imbue the stone and she's about to burn out and her mother comes and Sloane's there. I don't know where they've come from. Yeah. But Sloane is a conduit. Yes, that's her signet. So her mother makes Sloane touch it as a conduit and channels all of her power and all of her dragon's power into it. Yes. And then some Jacinia says Lyra's journal is different. Lyra talks about how Warwick doesn't want anybody else to be able to raise wardstones. Yeah. The translation's different and gives her her journal. So she's basically booted out on the floor. Mum's dead because she's imbued the stone. Yeah, so... But the stone's working just needs the thing and that was a really big shock it that for me was a bit of a shock yeah that she because she literally says like i'm doing it for my children yeah. and her final words are basically like just know that i'm killing myself for my children yeah. and mira hasn't talked to her this whole time because no. and then she comes in and she's like save her save her she's heartbroken that her mum's dead and like her last words to her are basically an argument Hateful, yeah. yeah so sorry there's so much to unpack there is the sage has landed outside and zayden is in like Com- hand-to-hand combat mm-hmm. with the sage outside she realizes what she needs to do yeah pulls the drag or speaks to one of the dragons they say yeah melgrin's dragon Corda. yeah he says i'll get the dragons she asks andana so all they all come in they all breathe on it wards are up all the wyvern drop all the men in a day yeah she thinks that's the end of it tries to talk to ten he says he's alive but you need to come and see yeah. him so out she goes. He's standing with his back to her overlooking the cliff. She goes over. She says, what happened to the sage? He says, I threw him over. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, what's wrong? And he's like, oh, another fucking thing I've forgotten to mention <laughs> is Sagail or Sagail was yes. his grandfather's dragon. Which is actually mentioned in Fourth Wing at one point. So there is a little drop of it and it's mentioned that if people have... yes. Um, if you mate with not mate, if you bond with a dragon, <laughs> like your elves. But to be honest, it's, it might as well have been fucking mating with all the plot points in this book for the last three hours. If you bond with a dragon that a family member at any point has bonded with, that is how you get a second signet. But it can either send you with insane, insane, or or you're fine basically. Yeah, and you get a second signet. Yeah, yeah. no, no, it, it's either you go insane or nothing happens. That's what they sort of imply. Right. Um. And he tells everyone that it was like his great uncle who Sagail yes. was made a uh, bonded, bonded with, with, but it was his grandfather. So he does have a second signet, and it's been an intrinsic. Yeah. And he can read people's intentions. Yeah. So then she's like, "Well, have you been manipulating me this whole time?" Yeah. And she asks him at that point what's your second signet and he's like you, you you'll you see me differently blah 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 and he tells her and then she's not happy because she's like oh well, you've probably been manipulating my me yeah. the whole time and then it ends with him turning to her and his eyes are all bloodshot and he's got the red veins because he's a venom now because the sage convinced him that he'd have to turn for love because she's dying and that it would end the war or, or whatever so he draws from the ground, turns Ben in, she gets the wards up, so they all die, but he doesn't. Yeah. So apparently sages aren't affected by the wards then, if he's not dead, if he's in the wards. Yeah. That's what also didn't make sense to me. And then it ends. Oh, it's, it's just, I don't even know what to say. Do you know, I actually enjoyed it when I was reading it. Now that we've done this un- unpacking, I'm, it. I'm fucking fuming. I wasn't a fan of it. I really wasn't. There were some really great moments like we've just mentioned, but I wasn't a fan. Yeah, this book 
I finished it and I just was like, what the fuck did I just read? But it just means that we've got another one coming mm-hmm. where we have to deal with Zayden being a venom. Yeah. She's still in love with him. They're still both bonded to dragons. Yeah. Their dragons are still mated. So they're still, it's going to be forced proximity. Yeah. What What is going to happen to Zayden? Yeah. We never get the explanation as to why Violet's hair is always grey. We never get this, like, why is she sickly? Yeah. There's some theories that I read that, like, her dad was then in and, like, her mother knew. And I no, because her dad was trying to tell her. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, but there's, like, some, yeah, like, maybe them. Violet's then in because she was conceived. It's all, like, maybe then in aren't what they think they are. Like, they're just worse. For- it's all rough. And as much as I've slagged it off, I have got some quotes that I really liked from the book. Um, one we've already said, my house, my chair, my woman. Another one that I really like. So she basically thinks she's going to die. She thinks that she's um, going to burn out right. when she's trying to imbue the stone. Okay. So she says to Ten, don't die when I die. Like, yeah. find another rider. Like, God, yeah. again, don't don't let yourself, don't let me be your last. Yes. And he says, you must save yourself. I chose you not as my next, but as my last. And should you fail, then I will follow. Oh, yeah. I love him. Really emotional. Um, Another one that I loved. She's looking out the window when they're in Eurasia. And a, it, it said that, like, the weather's different there. They're and then it's in chocolate cake, aren't they? Yeah. And um, it snows heavier there. Yeah. So she says, I bet we get seven inches tonight. And Satan replies, maybe more if you're good. Oh. <laughs> And I love that quote. Because you know, when I read that, I was like, that's really funny, but where's that Zayden been this whole time? Yeah. It's like we get these little moments, but really it's just been a red flag the yeah. whole time. <laughs> One quote, I don't, again, I don't know the context of it. It's just fucking Dean. <laughs> yeah, fucking Dean. This is Ten arguing with Aunt Anna. Okay. And he says, we do not eat our allies. And then they put that as like one of the excerpts at the top, okay. saying Ted's personal addendum to the Book of Brennan, as quoted by Cadet Violet Song. That's so funny. Um, another thing about this book, I was expecting them I all to fucking think, yeah. I was expecting them all to die because this is an account written by Jacinia and it's like yeah. covered correspondence yeah. and stuff like that. I may, just, they says like may their souls rest to Malik yeah. or something in the beginning. And, and like they're all going to die. That was what I was expecting the whole way through, is that everyone was going to die. Well, it potentially, like, they, it's yeah. not, you don't know what point in the timeline Jacinia is writing this from. Yeah. It's just such a mind fact. But I have got someone okay, to okay. So this is from, and it's, there's a valuable lesson to be learned here, and it's that when you see the entire Goodreads community read and five star the same book, you run as fast as you can in the other direction. <laughs> Another fourth wing one. I've read the book and I think it's so fucking shit. <laughs> Another fourth ring. There is a target audience for this, and I am not it. But even if you're part of that target o- o- audience, I think it's okay to admit when a, p- a novel is poorly written. No? <laughs> it's true, though. Yeah. When we when we did the fourth ring episode, obviously I'd read this as well. Mm-hmm. When I reread fourth ring, I actually realised this wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I just fucking hate Iron Flame. <laughs> yeah. Because I think, you know, my, like, I'm terrible in my brain. I just, like, m- mash them together. Yeah. And it was like... But when I reread Fourth Wing, I was like, do you know what? Actually, this was actually really enjoyable. I did really enjoy this book. It wasn't the hype that I expected it to be. It wasn't a five star. But it was a solid four star. I yeah. enjoyed it. And then when we fin- when I when I finished this, I was like, yeah, that's rough. And I think um, we meant, again, we spoke about this in the first episode, but like Rebecca Yaris isn't a fantasy writer. Yeah. And it's like, she's dipped her toe into the fantasy world, which is absolutely fine. She evidently is a very talented writer. Yeah. But she's tried to take on, like, big enough yeah size world to some extent like that of like game of thrones yeah. level with all these characters all this history yeah and i just don't think she's experienced no. enough and in two books you're not going to get 600 years worth of the history yeah that Va- vas Gaeth has apparently got yeah. and then there's just all this like oh fill in the blanks yourself like, yeah you can figure it out. Yeah, I just don't think it needed to be as complicated as it did. There's yeah. too many layers to it. She could have cut a third of all that nonsense. Yeah. Because in reality, the main plot points, I don't... And to be honest, I didn't even... I didn't understand it, but I didn't even mind Zayden becoming Venom at the end. Yeah. Because it is a big, like, oh, what's going to happen next? Yeah. But it could have been better explained. Because you... I only understood this from when you told me the other day. <laughs> Because I was like, how the fuck did he turn into Ben? And he like, only draws from the ground. And I was yeah. like, I don't even remember reading that because there was just too much going on. 
I know you really enjoyed it when you read it, but now that we've dissected it together, I think but I do you know what what I think I fall victim to is I read books so quickly that I all the information like just like jumbles together mm-hmm. and then at the end I'm like, Oh, what a lovely book. Mm-hmm. And then when I actually sit down like this and I'm picking all the parts, over, I'm yeah. like that didn't make sense, that didn't make sense. Yeah. Where did this come from? Like Yeah. Yeah. But so I think if you were to give it stars. So when I did my review of it, I put it as four stars, same as four yeah. three, I put them both as four stars. Now that we've dissected it and I remembered things and talked through things, I'm I'm not so sure. No, me I'm I'm honestly at a three. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I don't really like giving a book lower than a three unless I really didn't enjoy it and it was really like you know, yeah, like I managed it. to get through it, and like like I said, some of the plots, I was like, oh, okay, this is interesting. Like Jack Barlow being alive, like obviously it served a purpose because it turns out he's Venom, but like, fuck off, in it. Because was he Venom? Yeah, he was always Venom. Always Venom. Yeah. So the Venom plant, the implication is the Venom planted him to yes. kill. So Violet. I think from what I gathered, the like higher up you are in the Venom scale. Like in terms of power, the more red veins you have. Okay. So like the the young ones don't have anything. So that's how Jack so Barlow could get, get away with it. it. Yeah. But they always knew about Violet. So another thing that confused me is at the end, it was like predestined that there was going to be this young frail rider that Andana wanted and she'd seen it during her 600 years sleep or something like she says that she'd been asleep for like 600 years Mm -hmm. and that she saw a a female delicate rider and she knew she was going to bond her like what the fuck does that all mean like what that everything's predetermined and like everything's destiny yeah i think that's the thing is there's so much time spent on subplots that just don't matter yeah that we really in the terms of like what's going on with violet's dad why is violet here silver why is she like this quote-unquote chosen one we don't really get any bigger picture answers and i think again if it's a four-part series fine but they're big fucking books yeah, like, could that whole thing with Andana not be in the next book? Like, yeah. this is going to have to be fleshed out at some point. Yeah. So could that not be... Well, I suppose the next book has got to be all about Zayden being a Venom. It's yes. got to be. I just wonder, when we finish the next book, where are we going to be? <laughs> because, honestly, when I thought when we finished Forfin, we would have been considerably in a further forward point yeah. in, like, the plot than we are now, yeah. and we're not. Do you know what I hope? I hope if it is four books that by the end of the fourth book I'm able to look back and appreciate this book. Yes, me and too. I, I hope like that it will answer the questions and that this book would have set things up. Yes. Because then I'll be eating my words and yes. I'll do another review and I'll say, you know, I was wrong about Iron Flame yeah. because it's actually given us all this good content. But yeah. for now, yeah, I'm not I'm not It's an eight hundred page filler. Yeah. And I think because it, it, is it 800 pages? I think it's pretty, it's not far off, is it? It's a big old fucking book. I mean, this is what we're talking. We're talking, well, 622. So it's not, it's so friggin' big. Again, I'm not always trying to, like, go back to Throne of Glass and Sarah J. Mass, but spoilers for, for Throne of Glass series, is that, um, you know, a book this size, like we're talking in Kingdom of Ash, we're talking, mm-hmm. you know, Empire of Storms, I think what's so different about those books is they're just as big. You probably, in reality, if you were to like write down the points of the plot that we get in those books, probably actually don't get that much, um, you know, I guess, reveals yeah. in maybe like Empire of Storms. But it's enjoyable. Does that make sense? Because you know, right, like Dorian's off doing this. Kale's doing this. Like so-and-so's doing this. We know where we are. Yeah. We know where the, and we know eventually it's all going to tie like, up. They're all really well-established plot, plot yeah. points. Yeah, and really like characters that you're really involved in, yeah. really empathetic with. I know we talked about like we it was a rough start with Manon, but we got there, obviously. Um, But you know when you think about this, like, I can like everyone's a twat, you know. Like Dane's a twat. Do you know? I I read a review which was really good, and I should have screenshotted it. And it basically says like, why is Violet trying to be so morally good? Like she's trying to do everything yeah. for the good of everyone. Like she's like, I'll go and wield lightning if it means we get the luminary. I'm not gonna kill anybody. Blah blah blah. Like why is she so morally good? Like. She doesn't need to be, and then she ends up with fucking Zayden, who's the most morally grey character there is. So yeah. like, it like, 
I don't know, it's just all like really a bit weird. It's just too much messy plot points, too much confusion, too much lore, and not enough character, like character developments you can start to empathize yeah. with people. And I'm not normally a multiple POV lover. I do struggle with multiple POVs. I think this needs it. Yeah. When you go in that deep into all these characters, you need it. Yeah, because obviously the the last chapter of this and the last chapter of Fourth Wing were both from Zayden's point of view. Yes. And I would have enjoyed more of seeing yeah. things from his point of view. Because then, you know, it might have been a Nesta where we actually empathise with him and, yeah. and like understand why he's doing the things that he's doing. Yeah. But when we're only getting it from Violet's point of view when she's heartbroken over him because he's lying and, yeah. and keeping secrets, then we are going to not like him. Yeah. So maybe he is a redeemable character, but well, yeah. not now because he's the enemy. So, so what I was saying is, for me, I normally don't like to give a book that isn't, like, offensive or hateful less than a three star. But the thing is, I I genuinely think I need to be, oh, I think this is a two star read for yeah. me. And like you said, I really, really hope that I'm three and four books in and we're sat here and we're thinking a completely different thing and yeah. we realise this book was just a rough ride. I'm not saying it, it excuses it, but it built this entire world for us to have these amazing yeah. two further books and mm-hmm. i hope that's the case but do i think that's going to be the case no because no. we we're lacking so much world building yeah there's so much that i can't envisage because yeah. she doesn't explain it well enough. we're still up in the air about what exactly we're going to do next but we're definitely going to look at a dawn of on it yes um promising power that we're going to do a second yeah. one promise power as well yeah a fate inked in blood yes definitely so that's that yeah we're done cool. i'm flame fabulous fabulous thanks so much for listening join us next week for a new episode and follow us on tiktok and instagram at a pod of smut and wingspan <laughs>